We are recording. All right. Uh, welcome everyone to Park and Recreation Commission meeting for the town of Needham for Monday, August 24th. Um, let me read this long thing. Um, here comes Matt Tulin. Hey, Matt. We're just about to start. Well, it's a picture of Matt. Um, yeah, I'm here. Okay. All right. Um, here we go. As a preliminary matter, I am Cynthia Chaston, Chairman of the Park and Recreation Commission. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Christopher Gerstel. Here. Michelle Geddes. Here. Bruce Williams. Here. Matt Tulin. Here. Uh, staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Stacy Mulroy. Here. Uh, Kristen <clears throat> Wright. Here. And I think, is that it for tonight, Stacy? That's it. Okay. Um, good evening. This open meeting of the Needham Park and Rec Commission is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded to the public so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comments. Uh, for this meeting, we are convening by Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided to members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. Uh, we're now turning to the first item on the agenda. Uh, but before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda after they conclude their remarks. The chair will go down the line of members inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to, move, re, to mute your computer when you're not speaking. Uh, please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. Um, finally, each vote in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. Whew, that's that. Um, we don't have anyone attending, I understand, so there'll be no public comments. Correct. So why don't we go right into the director's report. You don't mind, Stacy? I do not mind. Um, so week five uh, for summer recess was last week and we were 100% full and we did not have to cancel due to weather. So it was a win-win all around. It was a positive program. We had to move over to cricket because uh, we lost access to the schools and the caveat was that if it, we got rained out, we were just going to cancel the day, but we did not have to do that. Uh, summer tennis numbers uh, were pretty good, not as high as I would like, about a little over 50%, but um, those that did attend were pretty happy. The pools today, tomorrow starts the last week of the pool, like the extended week, our bonus week. Um, I believe it's actually now 100% full, both for lap swim and family swim, which is great, and uh, this is this week more than ever. We get some complaints about there's not enough space for people. So it's, it's been it's interesting that it's come in now. Um, we've also got some people that um, try to register for like crazy times that don't exist. So I wonder if they missed the first round and just got our most recent media post and wanted to sign up. So, or maybe they're back in town. 
who knows? So okay. uh, pools are going great. Uh, closing bid was posted last week. The bids are due on 914. Kristen is shaking her head. The bids are being posted Thursday. Thursday. The email went out last week to post them. A uh, legal registration. Okay. Yes. On that. Um, the bid opening will uh, occur on Zoom at 3 p.m. on 9-14. That is a Monday. Fields and permitting. I sent an email um, last week, end of week, to after uh, talk, chatting with Matt about the process, just to get some basics of what people are looking for. We've got, I've gotten about half a dozen responses so far. Um, so I'm gathering that information. Uh, Dan Lee did reach out to me and wanted to grab a uh, meeting with me and Eddie and Tim um, because they are having more information even since his response from the, to the email, which was, I wanna have a meeting which was great. Uh, so that line of communication, I think, is really important. He did say there wouldn't be no football, so including he, practices. He said there would not be any football? There would not be any football. No football. Okay. Um, granted, that could have changed since the email, so we will be having a meeting about it, but that was the first stab at it. Yeah, that hasn't been communicated to the players yet. So, um, as I they the players had a coaches meeting on saturday and i saw dan's email i haven't said anything because i've seen dan's email but i figure that situation may be fluid uh i agree yeah i think i think in his brain it made sense just to cut it down but i think there's going to be a little uprising from the students which is understandable so yeah well and we'll to be honest one of the things that they're looking at is is more of a seven on seven type of thing, um, which you see done in a lot of spring football seasons in a lot of other areas around the country. They do seven on seven type of, more like a flag type of activity, seven on seven. So I think there may be a push or a, an ask to at least do something along those lines. Um, but we'll see. Great. Um... Obviously, we're keeping an eye on some of the protocols and stuff that's coming out from Desi, the state, and Maya on all things fields, and as well as in contact with HHS, who are not only now just concerned with COVID, but also West Nile and Triple E. So we are keeping in close communication with all of those groups. Um, playground, Matt. Oh, sorry, so Cindy, you have to say Matt. Yes, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I was reading. Go ahead. <laughs> Stacey, I just didn't know if we wanted to tell the commission a little bit about our conversation with regards to at least my perspective. I would love to get the other commissioners perspectives on some of these health issues while I feel that they are ever so important and we have to be in line with the health issues. We need the health department to own some of these communications, regulations, and enforcement, right? We can make, my perspective is, is we can make the youth groups and the other groups aware of them. And like we had last year, we had great support around the Triple E from the sports groups and their, their monitoring. But, um, you know, the health department's got to own some of this with us. We'll help facilitate, but we're not like the hammer on this. I just, I'd, I'd love for... The, the rest of the commission to weigh in. I, I think they're willing and, and more than uh, more than willing to be uh, the, the sports groups that is to, to be do, you know to be amenable to this stuff. But I just I didn't want our limited staff being having to go police what the sports groups are doing. So um, further on in the agenda, Matt, we have um, fields permits and fall summit. So how about if we dive into it then? Because then we can discuss maybe what should be covered at the summit, okay, rather than, um, than go off on it right now. All right, so we'll, we'll hold that off for a few minutes. Works for um, me. Okay, thank you. Um, playgrounds, all playgrounds are now open. And I am in conversations with two separate consultants about doing a very 
broad level assessment of categories in our playgrounds that we currently have into a level one, two, and three um, to help guide whatever playground projects were already in the works or that we need to maybe prioritize, prioritize uh, perhaps different playgrounds. So um, I, I'm sure many of you remember when I interview we talked I talked about what I did in Arlington and basically level one is rip it out and redo level two is you need somewhere between 50 and $75,000 maintenance to keep it get yourself another 10 years and level three was a you need some better safety surfacing and you know replace swings so I'm getting some quotes from some vendors to potentially start that process uh, obviously depending on the amount of the quote Right. So, so Stacy, do we have a budget for that? And um, the other thing is we also do have a plan for playgrounds. It may not be, it's nowhere near specific to what you're talking about, but we do have um, placeholders in the capital budget for playgrounds. I don't know if you've been able to explore that. Um, a little bit. So my question to you, obviously, um, before I really dig into the capital, I know that there is some money from I believe it's from CPC, is that correct, Kristen? Um, and two playgrounds were originally earmarked for this it, or discussed, both Perry and DeFazio were talked about or there's some initial uh, drawings for some upgrades. My question to you guys, is it specifically earmarked for those playgrounds and how does the community feel about those if they get bumped? Uh, in some towns, you know, you say playground project, FY21. In some towns, it says FY21 Perry Park project. And I didn't know where we were at. I just wanted to touch base with you guys. Um, Matt, did you want to chime in on that? Sure. I mean, Cindy, you're probably going to say the same thing I am. So, Stacey, what we did is based on the past staff, uh, our staff and, and our past director's assessment. Uh, and then we went through a diligent effort as a commission reviewing all the playgrounds and when their last updates were and what, uh, and, and looked at it by date. So there's an entire spreadsheet that outlines this analysis somewhere. It's either in a past packet or it's, if you don't have it, I'm sure I could find it somewhere, but it's definitely in a past packet where we discussed this and did all the analysis. And um, also the other piece is, is we also focused on those that are in our jurisdiction. So meaning that while the school playgrounds are technically our jurisdiction, we don't own and those all have to be done jointly um, with the schools and the school communities, the P particularly oftentimes the PTCs um, with those schools. So that's why a lot like if you look at Newman and uh, obviously Williams School, those are obviously brand new. Mitchell just did a new one this past year. So a lot of the playgrounds that we were focused on were the park and rec responsible ones, which is where we came to DeFazio and Perry. And I believe they were specifically mentioned in the article, the warrant article. We'd have to go look at the warrant. Um, but there was a fair amount of analysis done already, Stacy. So, I mean, it, it, I agree with Cindy. It wasn't the detailed of having a third party consultant come in, but we did list out all of our playgrounds when they were last updated, how, what their current, you know, good, bad, or indifferent status is. Um, so I think we have that starting point. I just, um, and then we also had a, as a commission, which ones are used the most. And we felt that particularly DeFazio with the tot lot, um, and its potential usage and its lack of upgrade in so many years that that was the, the primary target. But I mean, I, I'm happy to have it as an agenda item for a future meeting, but we should start with, I think we should start with what we've done and then you look at it and say, what, what do you recommend we do better? So it's either either more robust or is it good enough? But we should start looking yeah. at the analysis that we have. Um, I think, Michelle, do you want to say something? Yeah, and we've also had a lot, we've gone through a lot of discussions with groups of well, individuals and groups within Needham that are interested in upgrading specifically Perry Park. So I would also would not want to ignore um, sort of public 
outreach regarding um, playgrounds and we were committed, we had committed to them that we would look at this after the pools were complete, the pool is now complete and I just don't think we can continue to push it off. Um, I also wouldn't want the new assessment to slow down those pockets of money that we've allocated, you know, towards next year. I don't want that to then be pushed off to future years just because we need to feel like we need to reevaluate where the money's going. Because um, I do think we've, as Matt mentioned, have done a pretty thorough evaluation of where we think the money should be spent. Right. So, so I think what we're saying is that um, you may have a better starting point than what you think. It may be fairly far down the road. Um, or, or somewhat down the road, not as detailed as what you're doing, but um, this isn't very old. Our information should not be more than a year, 18 months old. Um, and we know it didn't get, these playgrounds didn't get a lot of use in 2020, so they shouldn't have changed too much. Um, but we did identify where there were weaknesses um, and, and things that needed to be upgraded. So, um, so hopefully you have a starting point that is, a, you know, not at the very beginning. Right, and, and, and to be clear, I, I don't have any agenda to switch out DeFazio or Perry um, because regardless of what the consultants come back with or if we hire somebody to say, well, actually, this is your priority, oftentimes the community's input kind of rejiggers those things, um, and that's what happened in Arlington, certainly, and, and I have no qualms about it happening here. Uh, in general, I'm never worried about the tear-outs. Those are always pretty clear um that they need to go it's the middle range that i prefer to get the consultant on because they can see the things as a playground inspector that i can't um diff because uh playground inspections change so frequently that like the height of something needs to change this needs to change that needs to change so it's never the pullouts that i'm worried about uh it's always the the middle of the road uh if you put in this much money you'll get 10 more years um, and that's typically why I like to go to an outside consultant, but um, I do hear you that the community, and I've seen DeFazio and Perry, and I'm, I'm not surprised they're at the top of your list. So uh, I am yeah. certainly behind that. Um, but like I said, we don't have a maintenance budget for anything in the park and rec department. And uh, <laughs> right. We know that. <laughs> Report from an outside vendor, it's easier to argue with uh, the town to say like, we need this much money to keep these amenities going. Sometimes it's easier, not always. Right, agree, but agree. Okay, all right, terrific. Um, CPC, long story short, we have two articles for the CPC moving forward. <laughs> Um, I will defer to if we can talk about this in the discussion items later in the agenda and I'll let uh, Cindy and Chris jump in on this, but uh, Claxon Field skins are in and also I believe we're going to help. We're going to try to tie in the lights so that they are programmable from the app that we use for DeFazio and Memorial, which would be huge. Frankly, if that's right. the only thing we do, that will be huge. Um, and then the DeFazio track renovations, which is the resurfacing of the track. Uh, assistant director position, I have uh, spoken with HR, looked at some other towns, assistant directors, worked uh, job descriptions, kind of worked on ours a little bit, and we'll be posting it after the Labor Day weekend. So that okay. it doesn't get lost in the shuffle of the end of summer madness. Terrific. Matt. Uh, oh, sorry, Cindy. Madam Chair, do Cindy, we want to have... Please. I'm so bad at this. No, it's all good. We're all mm -hmm. on one. Do we want to have um, a commissioner on the search committee? Uh, it is not typically... What I've been told is not typically that part of the process. It is all uh, internal, like myself, somebody from HR, and I don't know who else, but... Uh, that is what I have been told is when it is the department heads, the commission level are, are involved in the interview process. And then below that, they are not. Is what so um, was there a commissioner involved when we hired Angela? Was that you, Matt? That was you. Okay. It would, no, it was either Dave or Chris, I think. It was, somebody yeah. was involved. No, Angela was an internal, she was an internal 
candidate. So she was um, what they call waived into the position. Uh, you all were involved with oh, that. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I, I was involved with hiring the previous assistant director. I don't want, I don't take any responsibility for how that worked out, but. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to go with no commissioners. <laughs> Well, I mean, they got you in, Stacy. so. Um. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Um, but I wasn't, so I was involved with those interviews. Um, and I can't remember how, I think we were reasonably far along in the process. We may have been down to three people, I believe, that I interviewed um, with our previous director. Um, but that was a while ago. I believe there's no, one here in the there was one commissioner on the second time. No, it's okay. Go ahead, oh, Christian. Sorry. There was no. one commissioner on that. Yes, I was on the interview process for Angela. Even though she was an internal candidate, I was on the interview process for Angela. It was myself, Chris Coleman. I think that was it. It was just the two of us. And Patty, actually. That was, yeah. that was when she was recreation supervisor, not yep. during assistant director. Um, okay. During... Pre, pre, prior to Angela, that, that was, there was one commissioner on the initial interview committee when I think there was like six or seven candidates and there was a second commissioner on the second round mm -hmm. for the assistant director. All right. So Maybe I was that, on the second round. You're thinking about, Chris, you're thinking about uh, PSAB and Angela at uh, when we were filling the recreation supervisor position. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Well, regardless, so, are you interested in being part of this, I guess? because I will reach out to HR and find out. And then, uh, and I'm happy to have either way, frankly. And if the answer is yes, do you want to be all the way along or you just want to be back to like the final three or the final six or whatever? Because my expectation is that there will be quite a lot of applications. Uh, how, commissioners, how, how do you feel? Uh, Bruce. Is there anybody that jumps out right now that might be a good candidate that we know about? Uh, I, I do have some colleagues that I have reached out to and said that there will be a posting and that they should keep an eye out for it. Okay. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, anybody that you know that has worked with you in the past or has some good experience would be obviously put them to the top of the list and then just give it a fair shake. I would Right. I mean, they, they have to go through the process. We can't, um, we can't shortcut it at all. It's, you know, it's, it's municipal government, so it's um, a little different than the private sector, but um, certainly somebody that, that has a personal recommendation is always great to have. Um, so I think as commissioner I, that I would like someone involved in the process. What, what do the other commissioners think? I would agree. Chris said it looks like he was um, raising his hand to do it. So no, itch, itch, itch. <laughs> <laughs> and, I it, um, and partly that would be Stacy's just because um, even though you're not so new, they'll feel like you're kind of new because, you know, you don't get to work in the office as, at mu as much and it might be helpful. Um, but I, I certainly don't need to look through, um, you know, 30, 40, 50 resumes. I mean, I hope HR usually does a pretty good job of screening, I think, screening them down to a reasonable number. Okay, so I, I would say that there would be a commissioner. I don't know which commissioner, but there would be a commissioner who would be interested. Mm -hmm. I will send you all a survey. Whoever scores the best <laughs> will make it to the second round, and then I will interview each of you. Yeah, well. <laughs> no, just let me know, reach out to me and let me know if you're interested, and if uh, there's some sort of fight about it, we can have a race in the pool before we post the job. Oh, okay. All right. Cindy's Perfect. out. <laughs> yep. All right. Oh, wow. All right. Thank you. Um, any other comments on the director's report? If not, we'll move on to our discussion items. Okay. New discussion items. Pool updates. Um, Stacey, you've given us a pretty good update. The last day of the pool is Sunday. Is that correct? Sunday, August Sunday, 30th. The that is correct. Terrific. And... Um, how are you staffed this week? I know you had mentioned that maybe helping with some supervisory lifeguarding or whatever. Um, is that going to happen? Is office staff going to be down on the cool day? So Angela has agreed to stay on part-time. 
uh, to help us downstairs yeah. with some pool, either some filtration or maintenance or some staff, um, some oversight. Uh, when she cannot be there, we do have some supervisors. Um, I like to get into a chair sometimes. It really freaks out the staff and it really gets them on their toes. So I like to get up in the chair and make sure they understand what I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, if, if need be, I have opened my schedule up so that I can be on deck to oversee uh, the staff and, and I've had limited meetings this week um, during the high turnover hours, which is really the morning, just really trying to give Devin and Kate who are, Devin is already teaching and Kate is trying to figure out if she's teaching in person or not or at all, like, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. So trying to give them a break whenever possible. So uh, I will be around if need be. Okay, so, so Devin is still around. I didn't know if we still had any time. Devin is typically did. around in the afternoons, uh, not the mornings, I believe, is when he is teaching. And then he pops up typically around three-ish in the afternoon. Uh, and, you know, double checks all our numbers. And, you know, I was down there this morning checking the numbers, making sure everything was fine, even though we weren't open, so that when he got there, he had no surprises. Okay. Okay. Great. Any um, questions or comments from the commissioners on the pool? Okay. Perfect. Uh, summer recess. Uh, I think you brought us up to date in the director's report. Is there anything additional? No? Yeah. No one got COVID. Bonus. <laughs> That's perfect. perfect. Uh, let's see. Playground update. I, yeah, I know. All really. open. Yep. Ooh, great. Hey, as one who had a wedding this summer, believe me, making it through with no COVID is a big deal. Big, big deal. I was um, out uh, this weekend, just like out on the trails for like over two hours, and I had a mask on the whole time. And I really wanted to immediately text to every staff member and be like, thank you so much for doing this because it is unpleasant when it is warm. And those masks, they are not breathable to protect other people, <laughs> um, but it also makes them not breathable. So uh, yeah, they did a great job and, and, and they kept our kids safe, so. Yeah, that, that's not a small thing. I find it terrible terribly difficult to wear a mask and um, at times I've chosen to just not go out if I don't have to so I wouldn't throw a mask but obviously um, our staff didn't have that choice so yes please extend our thanks to them because um, we really appreciate that um, okay uh, any comments on the playground updates or anything else on the assistant director covered those um, so what move to the standing discussion items and we'll talk about CPC. Um, Chris and Stacy and I attended a chairs meeting last week with um, Mo Handel, who's the uh, chair of the select board this year, and Matt Borelli, who's the vice chair, as well as Kate uh, Fitzpatrick and Katie King. Uh, was that it? I think that was it, right? Um, and the meeting was to talk about uh, the CPC articles that were under Park and Rec's jurisdiction because um, we noted, um, and Commissioner um, Gerstel noted from the CPC meeting that our, our projects had been pulled from the warrant for this October special town meeting. So we had the chair's meeting to find out why they were pulled and, and if they could be reinstated if we wanted them to. And um, we had probably you know pretty lively 30 minute discussion or so. Um, and as Stacy said, one is Claxton, the Claxton project, which is lights and skin renovation for about 101,000. And the DeFazio track resurfacing, which is estimated at 160,000. Um, so we asked if they could be um, put back in the warrant if the CPC agrees to that. And I uh, came away from that meeting with uh, the town manager, assistant town manager and the select board saying that they thought that was a good idea. And I believe we left it that they were going to check with the community preservation committee to see if they would be in favor of those being put back into the town meeting warrant. Um, Chris or Stacy, anything to add to that? No, the only thing, like I said, I apologize that I wasn't on the last meeting, but when I talked to you know Cindy the day after, before the CPC meeting, I happened to get the agenda and noticed that the park and rec articles were being pulled 
and it, it didn't make sense because at your meeting at the prior one, you guys said it was going to be on. So when I see the agenda, I see they're off. I, I wanted to know why. So I brought the attention of Peter Pignatori, who's the chairman of the CPC. And we kind of, you know, we CPC itself did not take them off because I said that I, need, I needed to have a meeting with the Park and Rec Commission to decide if we want to keep them on or we want to take them off. But we also came to the decision that we needed to have that chair's meeting. And as Cindy said, it was a very lively meeting that we talked about. And we all agreed that these should go back on the CPC articles and for the warrant for town meeting. And, and the re just, uh, I'll call you in a second, Matt. The reason uh, they were taken off is um, town government is trying to streamline the warrant because again, our town meeting will be held outside um, and they would like it to be as streamlined and honestly as short as can be while accomplishing the business of the town. So they felt that these could be put back in uh, next year. Um, we didn't feel, Chris and I didn't feel the same way and we knew the commission had not asked to withdraw those articles, mm -hmm. uh, but Commissioner Doolin. No, that's great. Thanks Cindy for the additional color and Chris for bringing it up. Um, are, are the articles gonna go in under their original scope? Because like for Claxton, one of the things that we had in that scope was to make a true softball field out of the yes. true varsity level softball field out of that field. So I just wanna make sure that they're going in at their full scope without losing anything. Cause Stacy, you mentioned a skin and maybe redoing the lights to fit to the system. But if I recall, Eddie was gonna move the lights and redo all of the, you know, rejigger and redesign the field so that we could get that, that softball field in. Sure, uh, uh, Commissioner Gerstel, and then I'll go to Stacy. Um, yes, the Article 4 CPC for Claxton is for design funds of all the things that you just mentioned, Matt. So okay, it has great. to do with the skins. It has to do with the lights. It does have to do with the reconfiguring of flopping Claxton 1 and putting a Claxton 2 and vice versa. So it, it is a design fund article. Thank you, Chris. That's, I, you know, how, for, how I forget the design, pre-design, all that mm -hmm. fun steps. Right, right. Uh, it's Stacey. municipal. We need a 10-step process. Before we can put a shovel in the ground. Yeah, still I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> it's design and engineering. And from my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, those lights are 3,000 years old and basically have to come down. Um, and then yeah, the grading potentially. of them is, is outdated. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. So once we redo them, then we'll tie them into the Musco lighting system so mm -hmm. that right. when those forgets is, to turn but, off the lights, I can do it from my couch. Yeah, and the benefit is that uh, we don't have to go back to, we don't have to rezone that area for lights. That's Correct. The, that's the other benefit. So yes, we may not re, reuse the lights, Stacey, but we don't have to rezone because it's already zoned for lighting. And we're just going to move the no, poles I, around. I would like to add, I'm looking at um, a memo of March 11th from uh, the CPC that is an explanation of the proposals. Um, and Claxton talks about to design two key improvements. Current fields were constructed on a closed landfill that was not properly graded, blah, blah, blah. Um, so the requested funds would focus on key improvements to the design of the fields and the field lighting. So it doesn't specifically speak to softball, but it just mm -hmm. talks about um, improving the design of the fields and the lighting. Yeah, um, I think Eddie left it pretty generic, Cindy, but I, yeah. I'm pretty sure Eddie, Eddie understands what Eddie is fully on board with what needs to get done. I just, you know, I forgot about all the different steps. I just didn't want our scope to get changed on either project, frankly, that, right. you know, sometimes they might, oh, we'll put you on, but we're not going to give you as much money. So you're going to have to reduce your scope. That's all. No, but I believe where it stands now is that um, the select board and the town manager were going to go back to CPC and make sure that they were still willing to have these articles in. So I don't know when that final a uh, vote would happen, but maybe Chris, you could speak to that. I don't know when the next meeting is. Do you meet monthly? We meet bi-monthly, Kristen, correct? And we have <laughs> oh, one yes. coming up. We, we meet monthly and Thank the CPC you. meets monthly. And the next meeting is actually our public hearing, um, which will be on September the 2nd. And um, my understanding is, is that the, the write-up for town meeting members that we send out from the CPC is being finalized um, with these two articles in it. Great. Okay. Terrific. Thank you. So that's where those stand. Any, uh, uh, Chris? 
just on a little bit of a side note with the whole discussion of the CPC articles and Stacy, I know I mentioned this and Cindy, you're on the call too. I thought it was great actually having the chairs meeting and I would like to see if we can get on a regular schedule with the chairs of the select board and others, just as a more, hey, how do you do, this is what we're doing this month or what we have coming up or what we've completed, just so everyone's kind of on the same page. I mean, it could be a five minute conversation because we have things going or it could be a half an hour discussion depending on what we have on the docket. It's just something I think this is a time that we need to over communicate and just, you know, check in with other departments and let them know what's going on as a, as a safety thing, just so everyone knows what's going on. Mm. Oh, Katie King is working on scheduling that quarterly. Good. Terrific. Yes, we, um, we used to do that more often, actually. I think the last time I was chair, we had more regular meetings, um, at chairs meetings, and it included the schools, but, um, that was more to do with when we were planning Rosemary Pool, and then once we got past that planning, they seemed to those chairs meetings seemed to drop off. But great, so we'll so we'll assume it's in Katie King's court at this point. Okay, thank you. Um, great. Anything else on CPC? Terrific. Uh, the boat launch. Can I launch no a boat? Updates. Yes. No. no update. So I can't launch a boat. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Okay, that's enough. If you want to go to the bridge instead of jumping off the bridge, just launch it off the bridge. I mean, go for that. But no, no boat launch. So, so if you had to guess when we could launch a boat, and I'm asking you because the rest of us don't have a clue, when do you think you'd be able to launch a boat down there? <laughs> After we get some rain. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's the hold up. It's the rain. It's the rain. rain. Yeah, but you're right. It's but climate it. change. It's not our fault. Um, if like on the good end, fall 2021, on the bad end, late spring 2022. Okay. All right. Someday it will be off of our list. All right. Uh, Especially Walker considering Pond. we never put it on our list. Yeah, I, I know. That's why <laughs> we have never. Correct. Put but, but now it's on the list and I'd love to take it off, but I'm, I agree with you, Matt. Uh, okay, moving on to item C, Walker Pond. Um, Stacy, can you give us an update? I know you have scheduled a meeting uh, for tomorrow, I believe, right? Five o'clock on Tuesday. That is correct. I have scheduled a meeting where Tony Delgazio can be there. Um, and then I sent it out to everybody else that is on the focus group and we have two members from walker pond and um tara from health deb and clay from concom we have katie king we have marianne from select board and eddie and i could be missing somebody but we have a good group of people cindy is on the thing but she's bailing on us tomorrow night so we, um, uh, I cannot make it. If another commissioner would like to attend, it is five o'clock. I actually have three things tomorrow at five o'clock. I don't know why. I said to Stacy, why a Tuesday in August at five o'clock is so popular. But I had two meetings and then I got her note and said, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> so if any like to be on that call from the commission, um, obviously Stacy will be able to handle it fine. But um, if a commissioner would like to be there, raise will, your hand we will also be recording it um so you can sit back and watch it tomorrow evening at your leisure um but basically it's it's a moment for tony to update the focus group and specifically walker pond on what we are doing uh we have made it known that it is important to us uh but it is not on the front burner of the stove uh so that is our process moving forward and there are a lot of links I mean that I can send it to you if you're interested in reading the detailed reports that you may have already had um, they have from previous years so uh, the meeting is tomorrow at five and, and I you know it, it'll be the next step in moving it, right so hopefully so they, taming, tapping them down a little so so there, there's been some really good work done on that pond, at least in assessing what's going on with that pond. I think um, what's missing is what do we do 
do next? And what's also missing is what is the town doing right now? Because we've been told, I think, that the town is doing, taking some action with regard to that pond. But I know as a commission, I don't think we know about that. And I don't know if the abutters know that. Um, and then the other big question is, will that be able to go forward to CPC for December of 2020? Or is it more likely 2021? Uh, and I'll call on Commissioner Tulin, who's raising his Yeah, hand. so unfortunately, I can't make it either, Stacey. I've uh, got a meeting tomorrow. But Cindy, that's exactly my concern, is are we, and Stacey, I like what you're saying. We're tamping down. It's important, but, you know, it's not our front burner. But somewhere, are we putting forward that it's unlikely that it will be for December of this year for CPC? Because I, I I mean, I don't know if it's necessary. I, you guys are a lot closer to whether it's even necessary. And maybe it's not necessary based on what's happening with the town now. But from our past conversations with this group, I think they have an expectation that there will be some sort of joint article in the future. And I just would like us to have a, a stay, as we're not going to be there to help you, Stacey, I just want to make sure that when you're, how you're resetting expectations is, is specific enough without being as specific as you may want. <laughs> I, I think the product, product is a little twofold. So the town owns 80% of this pond uh, and it is an amenity. Um, and I think what Walker Pond Association, it, like they're definitely, you know, they're, they're the squeaky wheel right now. Uh, and they've been bumped quite a bit. So I think they're getting squeakier. I think that there's a, there's a reason a select board member has been named to the focus group because they were not on my original plan, uh, but they have asked to join. So I'm wondering where that's gonna go and I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. I don't know if the town feels more strongly about this project um, than we do, but I also think that Tony is gonna give a lot of insight of what we're already doing to not just Walker Pond Association, but I think to the town and all the department heads that are that are on this meeting. And I think that will be helpful. And, you know, in general, we record a lot of our meetings, but I also think it's helpful to pass this meeting on to the association that's not going to be present so that they are aware. And, you know, in two months, if a new person takes over and they're like, you're not doing anything, we can send them the link to this meeting. Uh, so that is, you know, I honestly, like, I see both sides of it, you know, for us, is it the most important thing? No, but also I've been by that pond a few times now and it's like, ooh, okay, I see what they're saying. It's really important. We do own a lot of it uh, and we put a lot of uh, time and energy into our fields, our buildings, our playgrounds, and this has gone, from what I understand, it's just been like, it just has kind of been floating there for a while. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah. I, I think this meeting is, is really important and I think it's going to give us a lot more opportunity to have different conversations and perhaps space it out. I, yeah, I, uh, Stacey is exactly right. And I would add that um, this has gotten the attention of the select board and the town manager and the assistant town manager. And I think it has been elevated because of that. Um, and the other day at the chair's meeting, um, the town manager mentioned um, when we pointed out that hold up really has been trying to get this time. So busy. She needed to talk to like you. She mentioned that um, she had met with the town engineer and I think had gone over and reprioritized his projects because he has such a full plate. Um, so she's aware of the fact that he's he's in great demand and that he's also, I'm, I'm gonna call him a bottleneck for lack of a better word um, in my mind. She also mentioned something interesting, which I'd never heard, which I'd never thought of before. And that was that perhaps for this project, we would, um, we should consider getting outside engineering help. And that's the first I've heard of that. So if we could um, farm out this engineering, uh, um, I, I assume it would have to be managed by Tony's, but maybe it gets Tony a little bit out of the doing and, um, gets him to be able to focus on the other stuff he has to do. So if we can pursue that and get some funds for outside engineering help, then we can move this project along. I mean, it is important to us as a commission. It's just that in the rankings, we've got the pool, we've got the fall, fall field permits, we've got programming, 
We've got an assistant director to hire. I mean, we've got some other big things that um, have leapfrogged it, um, which is the only way I can think of it. But but we do have the intention of the select board, and I think that will help move it along. And if we can get some outside engineering help, then who knows? Maybe we can get this fast track for December of this year. I find it hard to imagine, but maybe, maybe. Uh, Stacy or Chris, anything to add on uh, as to what we heard? No. No. Okay. Again, if anyone can make it tomorrow at five, um, contact Stacy. She'll send you the link. Otherwise, we'll wait for an update. So thank you, Stacy. Um, okay. Now on to fields, permits, and fall summit. Um, here we go. So. Commonwealth has released, you know, more information and MIA has come out with their stuff. And I, I was seeing today, Stacey, that you um, copied us on some, some, or we were copied on things from soccer, uh, from Mark Miskin, and I don't remember who else we had emails from. But um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you see going on for field permits? So right now, like I said, Matt and I talked last week about trying to gather the, the very basic information are of, are you going to have a season? What is it going to look like? Are the numbers going to be the same? Uh, because, you know, in every town and, you know, what I've heard from Miriam is like, you know, for instance, football puts 10 teams on one field. Well, that's not an option anymore. And soccer puts 17 under seven teams on one field. Well, we can't do that. So the, the, the reaching out was like, what are you envisioning without being too specific? Um, and I've had conversations with Eddie about like, okay, let's try and line the fields or start prepping the fields as if we would any other year. So line them the way we always have. Um, so that we are prepared so that when we can pull the trigger on these permits, then we can pull the trigger. One of the things that uh, still confuses me, but I'm, I'm trying to figure it out, is the people requesting fields just requested a field, and our department just put them where we thought they should go. Uh, the forms di didn't actually have a field that they requested. Uh, that is being changed because it's a lot easier to permit a field if I know which one you want or which one you've used for the past 10 years. Now, by and large, it sounds like they've used the same fields over and over and over and it's not that confusing, but I think we're going to have to be creative with some of our field space this year and a baseball field may sometimes be a multi-purpose field and a square piece of grass in the middle of Perry or Riverside, maybe a field hockey field. Um, so I think we're going to be more creative than we, we have been in the past. So I wanted to get a sense of who is planning on doing what and when and how much. Are you really going to try to stick to three practices a week or do you understand that that's kind of crazy? So uh, the answer is 50-50 on that. Some of them are still crazy. Um, so we're, like I said, about a half a dozen, maybe a little bit more than half a dozen responses. Um, and they're, you know, and the groups are like, we want this, but we understand this and we can try to do this and we can spread out over here. Um, so they, it sounds like the user groups are paying attention. They do get it. They are watching the different changes from whichever group decides to change their protocol per day. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. We just have to move into the next level. Um, and the big thing will be, you know, if I can tie, if I can figure out what the schools need, because my understanding is they get the after school time, then I can go from there on trying to figure out who's permitted where and when. Uh, our permitting system, frankly, is archaic, and <laughs> I'm trying to get it up to speed a little bit and then eventually get it on a software system that is user friendly for the public, not just for us. Yes, and in the commission, um, I think I. You froze, Cindy. Do this. Um, so why don't we use some different software? Um, so 
So hopefully you can bring us up to speed. But um, uh, Matt, did you have anything to add or, or um, expand on that? No, I th Stacy covered it uh, pretty well. I think the biggest thing is, I don't know if we've heard from baseball, but we are gonna have to, I think we need to be flexible in providing as much space as possible. And I don't know if Eddie's fully on board with that, but um, because there's just no way that all these sports groups, even flag football can't use just Memorial for what they wanna do based on the rules. We can't have tw more than 25 people on a surface at any given time. So flag football, which was typically running seven games or six games at a time, can't do five games at a time, can't do that, right? So, um, we're going to have to have every, you know, not everybody is going to get all their utilized and wanted space. Um, so we're going to have to, we may be taxing the fields a little bit more than we have in the past because we might use, you know, baseball outfields a little bit more than we've traditionally done as we've tried to stay off of them as a historical guideline. Um, but it, you know, we're not, I mean, that's sort of why we designed Newman the way we did. It's why we designed Walker Gordon the way we did, why we have Claxton designed the way we have, but you know, the, the staff is going to have to get pretty creative on, on some of these things. And that's also Stacy, why we typically don't ask a user group to tell us what field they want, because we often have to tell them where we can fit them. It's not because it, you know, Otherwise, soccer would ask for every field on the every the, field, every field, even baseball diamonds and dirt, and um, the, to fit all of what they want, and that's what would happen. So, uh, there, there, I, I, I appreciate and and am hopeful that you can revise, you know, revise this process. But uh, yeah, that's kind of where we've been at. But I, I just want everybody to understand where we, where we're going to have to have more flexibility to get everybody on. Yeah, uh, Commissioner Gerstel. Uh, the only other thing I think Stacy brought up, which I thought was a great idea, is I know we're always traditionally doing the spring summit in December with all the user groups. I think with the times we're in right now, if we need to have a Zoom field summit with all the user groups, so we're communicating the message all at once to all the user groups, I think it's a great idea. The one last thing, Cindy, yeah. was what I taught, brought up on the director's report is all of the health department stuff. I don't, you know, we can put the guidelines in. We can help communicate it, maybe give them a slot in that summit. But, you know, cascading that to the user groups, coaches, enforcing that on the fields, you know, we're not going to be the park and rec police force, right? So if a user group puts more than 25 people on a field, I mean, I think we should have a discussion whether that means they lose their permit or not, but I don't want us going around having somebody being a field checker uh, between six and nine at night. I just don't think that that's our department's responsibility as much as I want to be supportive of what the health department wants. But, you know, we have to, uh, the user groups have to be somewhat accountable, but I, that's just my perspective. I'd love to have that kind of discussion, but that's that's where I worry about how far do we go in what the director's got to do from a field permit and field summit versus health department or other departments in how do we navigate all this? Because, you know, right now we know stuff is happening on the fields so that's not kosher. You know, when we see it, we say something, but we know it's happening. We can't necessarily control it. You know, I mean, user groups are doing it now with their summer permits. It just doesn't make sense that we have to go try and be the police force for this. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Right. So, uh, any other comments? Stacy. Um, I think uh, I agree. We, we can't be the, the policing of the madness. However, we do often get the complaints from other people that are noticing. So I think we should in the future have a plan of like, if we have X amount of issues or, or this person, this group comes up a significant amount of time. Do we talk about it? Do we pull a permit? What do we want to do? Um, only because we, regardless of who has the permit, people reach out to us and then we become the owners of the problem. Uh, so we need to figure out what to do down the road, um, probably sooner than later. 
Then my other thing is, you know, I've been trying to think creatively about this field stuff. I think there's ways that we can uh, spread people out. I think with the schools being hybrid, if some groups want to go two days a week, maybe they don't all have to go after school hours. Maybe they can go during the day hours. Um, also, we need to, because we're still in COVID, because people can't do as much as they want inside or other things, we still have to think about passive recreation on these fields. We can't just, I feel strongly that we can't just book a solid day every day, every day of the week for just youth sports because that's just not our entire. So Stacy, Saturdays, Saturdays and Sundays have been traditionally that with the adult soccer being the one option and then it's evenings. So the passive rec, so the schools have their fields during the day from all school hours for gym classes, recreation and the NEDP. So that would be Mitchell Memorial, all of that. And then the youth groups get, there, is, there really isn't passive recreation on these fields after six o'clock during any of these seasons. The only time right. for passive recreation is if somebody's not on it. Right, right but there is now. People are out there now after six. Yeah, but there's no permits. But when the fall sports kick in, every, every traditionally folks have known, I mean, and the track is used even though that there's a soccer practice happening on the field in the middle of the track, people will still go use the track. Um, but once a permit is in place and a sports team shows up, everybody just sort of has to pass, you know, they have to cede to the sports team. That's, that's how right, it's that's always a, worked. Yeah, right. I'm just saying like people can't go to trampoline parks. They can't really go to indoor rock climbing. They can't do all the things that takes them outside of the parks anymore. Uh, and so more and more people are on the fields or on the trails. Uh, I've gotten more trail issues in the last couple of weeks than I have ever. Um, and in the, however many months I've been here, I, it feels like 10 years. I'm not really sure. Um, but you know, people are out and about way more than I think they typically are. And I, I want to preserve, I'm not, I'm not saying we shut down DeFazio like on a Friday night where there's lights. I'm just saying we shouldn't book I don't like to blanket book just a whole field for say a soccer group or a baseball group, especially when nine times out of 10, they don't use every slot. See, the thing is, Stacey, in our town, they do use every slot. They haven't not, even they used do. the slots that they, we have permitted this summer. Well, I think the summer is, I don't think the summer is indicative of our fall and our spring sports activities, um, to be fair. So I, you're I, saying that if somebody booked 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Saturday, they would be there every single minute of that day? Pretty much. Uh, pretty much. Pretty much. You may okay. find occasionally a Sunday afternoon is not used as much. Occasionally they have time. But um, you would be surprised. Um, I feel like almost every single kid in town plays sports. And they, many of them play more than one sport and we are booked. And that's the and other thing to- I, well, go ahead. I challenge you guys. I challenge you to really look at the fields this fall and see, but, are they really booked the way that they're scheduled? So Stacy, I- Because I, I, this, I, I, I mean, think that, Needham there's isn't two that things. different from all the other communities I've worked in. So two and, things. Two things, I, I accept your challenge, um, but I also, <laughs> I also think that um, we have not had organized youth sports for six months. These teams have not had the part. So soccer doesn't have the participation in the summer that they normally do. Baseball has had limited and many of their, many of their players have gone out of town um, for AAU and other things. So there's, I don't think the summer is indicative um, and I do agree, we've seen a lot more passive recreation, which is great and I support. But with schools coming back, even on a hybrid level and schools were, every sporting activity was canceled back in March. That 
these youth groups are dying to do something and these people are dying to get their kids. I actually think you will see less passive, less asks for passive recreation because the youth will be utilizing the fields for the sports groups that they have and, and the sports activities that, that are available. Um, you know, that is, that's my assessment. I would, you know, I would agree with Cindy. The only times that I've ever been, uh, at the fields where it's been nothing has been either like an 8 a.m. when the adult soccer at the physio didn't show up or they had an away game, right? Or, uh, uh, you know, football had the permit on Saturday morning and they had away games, so there was nobody there. But I have not, I, if you walk around any of these fields at six o'clock at night, other than baseball fields, which may not have as much participation in the fall, but Mr. Gerstner can tell us, right? that's the only places where I tend to see openings is, you know, we don't have full utilization of baseball because it's the fall season. It's not spring. But. Uh, I don't disagree that like the fields are going to be used more and that youth groups, soccer, uh, youth sports programs are dying to get out there, but you know who else hasn't been doing anything? The art kids, the STEM kids, the Lego robotic kids, and they still need a place to go. And there still are no options for those guys because we still can't get in buildings. So I think that there's going to be still a higher level of passive recreation than we are typically used to while we're trying to schedule these fields. And that's all I'm saying is all those other programs that kids do aren't, can't get done. So I think that we just have to keep just keep an eye on that at the same time as we focus on the youth sports. I, I agree. And I appreciate where you're coming from. And I agree that we want to have more things there. Um, but, and, and I don't know, I have not heard what junior football is doing so that, you know, if they have decided to cancel, that would open up space. But again, the other side, we, with soccer, baseball, football only that's around 2,500 kids that are doing some sort of youth sport, not counting overlaps. And there may be more. And then there's track. Michelle doesn't, doesn't track have a fall program, right? Which has a couple of hundred kids. So when, when you look at that across our student, and that's not the, that doesn't include high school. Right. But, right. So there's 1500 kids in the high school who are using the fields during the day. And that does, so that doesn't include the high school, but that's pretty much 5,000 of our kids out of a 30,000 30, person population. I think you have a very high percentage. I agree that there's that audience that you described, but there's a very high percentage of, of, our, of our youth population that are active in one sport or another in any given season. And many of them, unfortunately, play three sports in a season, which is you know against my better judgment. But um, I, I understand what you're saying. I just, you know, I think we all, we, if you do the math of how many people each sport is doing, and then you try and bang that up against how many practices they can run during their evenings. And then on weekends, you're going to find that we have very little space. The, well, the math just doesn't add up. Right. And, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't not prior, like not make Steve sports important. I'm just saying, we shouldn't prioritize them every second of every day on every field. And maybe if a group has three practices a week, they have to go to two. Or if they have two, they have to go to one. I mean, we are still in a pandemic and we still have to make sure that we are protecting people and trying to give to the community. I mean, th there has to be a balance on what's more important. And I think youth sports clearly is important. And trust me, I was a three sport athlete, not all in the same season. That's insane. My parents would <laughs> never have gone for that. But I played three sports. I played sports all the way through college. They are important to me. Unfortunately, they're not important to my children. So now I have a different perspective on how do I keep this kid busy because I can't sign them up for a run around the field because um, they want to draw all day. It's so boring. But I still have to find an outlet for them. And so we do a lot of hiking. And I think there are still some families that are in that. And, so and I, I, I think I just I think want to balance that. We, 
we could argue all night. I would prefer that we not, but um, I think we we will need to be flexible. I mean, the sports sports is very important in this town, and the sports groups are used to a lot of access. Um, I don't think I'm not willing to take away that access right now. If it turns out that we have requests from other groups um, to run programs for the you know for art programs or STEM programs or whatever, right? Um, and maybe some of those requests will come from our own staff because we're not doing any fall programming as far as I can tell at this point. Uh, that's fine, but that space might be pretty uh, easier to find because you don't need a big field, you don't need lines, you don't need goals, you need some amount of space and it could be a parking lot, it could be whatever. Um, so I think we need to be flexible, but um, at this point, I don't think as a commission, we would be willing to say to our sports groups, hey, you're not gonna get the space you're used to because we might have passive recreation. I think the people doing passive recreation right now will be thrilled when their kids go back to sports and those people will be at the fields if they can be there to watch and they'll be walking right. around the field and, and, or at the playground with their younger kids or whatever. So um, I, right. I think that's I mean, where we are. We'll to be, be clear, fun. I'm not advocating for taking away their time that they have already been used to. What I'm saying is if, for instance, football gets Memorial Field from this time to this time, they can't all fit on that now. So now they're going to request another field. And so right. those are the kind of things we have to think about. Like, do we, because everybody, and that's just football. Soccer is going to be in the same boat. Baseball, less because of the number of people on a team. Um, but I think this goes into the policy of, you know, I think this ties into, do we let outside for-profit groups run programs? Because we can't run them. We are struggling with fall programming. Yoga studios want to run programs on our fields, but we can't allow it. So I think we need to have a bigger conversation, not today, uh, about how we bring in those vendors, because not all of them want to run through us. They just want to pay a permit and do their thing. Um, right. Right, and I, it's easier if we can get them to come under our umbrella, but it's not always easy to do. So I, I can tell you as a commission, our policy is that those for-profit groups are probably not going to get space on our fields. If we have someone come in and run a park and rec program, that's a different thing. But the yoga studio coming in to use space for a yoga program, probably not happening. Maybe I would be outvoted by the other commissioners. I would it's unlikely I would ever allow a for-profit group as opposed to giving soccer or lacrosse or baseball or football more space. It's just, it's probably not going to happen. But, um, but I think, I think you're right. That's that conversation is not for tonight, but in terms of a fall field summit to come pull it back a little bit to our agenda. Um, what do you think? I think it's a good idea, but I think the timing needs to be, the right. I think right now we're not ready because we don't really know enough. Um, so is it mid-September? Do we need it before mid-September? Do we need it at the end of September? What, what do you think? Bueller? I think we need to have, we need to have it before, I mean, schools are going to open on the 18th or whatever the middle of September is, right? The 14th. Or, I think it's the 14th. 14th is when the schools open up. Uh, my expectation is that the sports groups would want to be on the fields that same day. So we would need to have a meeting before then so that they can all be prepared because they also need to inform their coaches and teams and parents about when practices will be, where they will be, where Josie and Johnny will be on any given point in time and all of their rules. So they need at least two weeks before then of final notification and everything like that. So, I mean, I agree it's tight, but that means that we've got to pull something fairly quickly together in a Zoom meeting um, if, we, if we're going to try and do that. Because, they, you know, once we get the permits to them, their field schedulers have to then go figure out, based on the space they have and the rules that they've got, which is going to be more complicated, you know, is this team doing one practice a week or two or three or, you know, and how are we doing with games and away games or are they doing only local games? 
I think that's, and then we also have to factor in Memorial Park trustees into all of this because we don't have jurisdiction. We don't, we schedule Memorial Park, but if football is or isn't happening, that could change their perceptions on what happens with Memorial Park usage, right? Um, because we know that soccer has traditionally been gifted Memorial Park usage from the football permit. Right. So um, that we have to have that conversation with Memorial Park trustees. So there is a lot that needs to get done. I don't, you know, and I think the summit's a great idea, um, but maybe we can have the summit in between the time we give the permits out and the time we start. Like we could give the permits out and then the following week have the summit with, hey, these are the expectations or whatever, or the week before, as long as they have their permits and have started scheduling, that may be an option. Do you think we need a summit? Can we do it with um, just with communications? Because I'm not sure there's time for a summit. In one sense, I actually think it's easier to do a summit with a Zoom call um, than, than if we were trying to do a formal summit. Because we could pick any day of the week, we could pick any evening of the week. I think we have a little bit more flexibility in, in doing that. Um, I do think you, if we needed to as a backup, I would be, I think we could do it with, with direct communications, but they would have to be a lot of coordinated communications with the health department and others to, to get that out there um, and make sure that it's clear and cascaded. I, I think, you know, I think it would be more succinct in a, in a 30 minute, 45 minute field summit on a Zoom call. Could it be done the other way? Yes, it could, but I think I think, I think you have, I think we have a plan and a contingency plan. I think, it, I think, I mean, I agree with Matt. I think it'd be easier and more succinct to have a Zoom call, although I might have to mute everybody. Um, but I do think it would be easier to get everybody on the same page at the same time, record it so everybody's aware. If anybody can't make it, they can watch the recording. And I can talk to Tim. Tim was on vacation last week and his first day back was today. So I tried not to bombard him too much. I did a little, but uh, my plan is to talk to him about it and see if he can be there because I think it's important to have somebody from the health department basically saying like this is what you need to do and that we like Matt mentioned earlier aren't going to police it but that they need to be hold themselves responsible so I think it'll be good to have both health department and parks and forestry all in the same room and okay. the other benefit Stacy too is the sports groups could then send that link to their coaches. Exactly. Right? Because one of the things we all know is that message often gets to the directors of the programs, but it doesn't hit every last little coach. Many coaches are very open, but if they made, it's just sort of like the concussion protocols, right? If, they, if their coaches have to go through concussion protocols and Corey forms, they've got to listen to this Zoom meeting. I mean, it, it, who knows? Uh, I, just a suggestion, but... It, I think it could be helpful. I think we could do it either way, but I think it would be helpful to do it as a Zoom. As long as the commission, I don't think we need necessarily full commission either. Maybe, you know, we could have one or two of us on the call if, I know we've done these traditionally as a commission, but. Should have two or less. Otherwise we fall under open meeting laws and that's a whole thing. Right. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad to have it as an open meeting. I don't, I don't think there's any reason we can't. It just limits us a little bit in terms of hosting and stuff. But all right, so, so Tim, Eddie, Dan Lee is an important piece too, right? To talk about what's going on with high school. Um, okay. Okay, so we just need to come up with what's a reasonable time to be ready for this. I'll talk to Tim and Eddie. Tim may have a better sense of what is a reasonable time to be ready for this. Uh, see if I can okay. nail down a date and then let you guys know before I put it out to the broader user groups. Okay. okay. Great. Um, any further questions or comments on fall? Do we know what baseball, summit? what football is doing? Do we, have we heard from junior football? Junior football, Tom Lamb. Or is he a different guy? I'm not sure. I don't. Chris? I believe so, I think. I was sent a text by <laughs> uh, a chain that's saying that junior football has canceled their season as of August 13th. 
That's what I've I heard. Don't know if that changed, but that was as of that time. I didn't. So I'm I'm going off. It was canceled as of the 13th. My memory of reading my emails says that they canceled, but I would have to go back and double check. Mm. I can double check too. Um, I'm trying to see if I have an email. I, I think mine is only about flag football, which Chris, you would know about, right? Yeah. Yes, there's that, that should almost... open up space if they don't. That should open up a, a fair amount of space mm -hmm. uh, because they had Claxton and Memorial, so that that will open a fair amount of space if um, if indeed the, that's the case. The baseball numbers are looking the same as last year. Um, now, mind you, the fall program is probably the smallest of their programs, but they're still looking around the same types of numbers that they are for the uh, for the past few years. Okay. Then we also have um, girls field hockey, right? That um, right. is starting. I can't remember Dina how many yep. how many people did Dina say she has in that program. I can't remember how many kids she said. She's um, got seventy three two nights a week. I don't know if she's doing all kids both nights, but she has seventy three kids. That's wow. a lot of kids. Yeah, that's a lot. Of kids. That's great. Good for yeah. her for a first year program. Yeah. Okay. All right. Stacey, any comment on that? On the... No? Okay. It's just, uh, I, it's a lot of kids. I, I think it's in non-COVID world that is amazing and I'm super happy for field hockey and, and Dina. In COVID world, I'm like, uh, but we'll make yeah. it work. Um, uh, Commissioner Bruce, you had a, uh, your hand up? Yeah, I mean, one of, the, one of the things that Stacy said about 10 minutes ago, which is people are losing sight of the fact that we're in a pandemic. And I've talked to coaches, I've talked to uh, parents and players, and they just want this over with so bad. And they say, no, the, the fall sports are going to go on as normal. Everything's fine. Kids are going to go back to school. And I think, I, I just don't think it's realistic at all. So they're going to request uh, to do things, you know, typically as, as normal, it's just not going to happen. I mean, we're actually could be heading into a lot more trouble in the next two or three months. I mean, I don't know. I, I work for a private company, but they told me, you're not, I, I usually travel like about three weeks a month, you know, two or three days a week, see customers. They said, we don't want you traveling until sometime next year. And all these parents and, and coaches think that, Oh, we're, we're, we're all set. We're, we're, we're going to be back to normal before you know it, but it's totally not realistic. So and they're going to they're going to, they may request things that just don't even make any sense in the next month or two. So I, just, uh, I, I agree. I, I suspect they need to do this for their sanity. They have to act like it's going to be yeah. normal. Cause I don't think they have else to do, but I agree with you. Right. I mean, I've talked to a couple of coaches and they say, oh, no, everything's fine. Everything's just going back to normal. And, and parents say the same thing. It's like, it, it, like, like Dan Lee was smart when he said, I have no idea what's going to happen. Nobody can predict what's going to happen. So, I mean, it's, it's just that's the reality of the whole thing. Right. So, unfortunately, we're going to be stuck. Uh, some people are going to be very unhappy when they find out they can't get what they want, like if they had years before. It's, it's, well, they, they may they may get what they ask for, but they may not be able to use it. They won't be able to get out there. So we'll be short. It will be very short, and then they'll be back inside. But oh. um, I, I don't think we have a choice but to try to proceed, right, as best we can. Right. right. I just uh, have to just, you know, plan it out the best we can and then just see what happens uh, as the uh, – Kids go back to school. They're going to all be together. You know, they, they're going to, they're not all going to do the right thing. We all know that. I mean, adults don't do the right thing. So kids certainly aren't going to do the right thing. So right. We, have to, we have to react at the time. The kids are better at it. Right. Our experience at, camp, at programs, they're better at it. Uh, I think so. They, yeah. I'm, I'm more worried about the adults and the coaches, to be honest with you. Right, the teachers, right. Yeah. Right, agreed. All right, all right, well, stay tuned for fall field permits. Might be a bumpy ride. Um, okay, anything else? Anyone else have a comment? Okay, um, events? No events. No new events. Any events? 
perfect uh, projects. I don't even know why we have, what project do we have that we'll be talking about? I need to change the agenda so it says project and then it says underneath that boat launch and Walker Pond and that's I love it. Think. That would make more sense. Okay, we'll do that for next time. Done. Uh, that's good. I, I, oh, excuse me, Commissioner Gerstel. Just, and again, not trying to be a jerk here. Are we doing any fall programming for Park and Rec or are we just kind of seeing what's happening? Like, I know we do some things for the fall. Do we have anything on the radar for fall programs that are, the Park and Rec will run? So right now we have a few, uh, well, we have one solid, which is Girls on the Run program will be starting up. Uh, we are looking into some virtual programming. The somebody, somebody theater program reached out to us. Uh, it's Eden community. That's the one. Uh, reached out to us about they are leaning to, they were asking about virtual versus in person. The only space we have to run an in person program is in our space, which as you know, is 50% occupied by the health department. And when originally we reached out to the health department to ask them about that, we got kind of this, um, so we don't know that we'll be able to actually program that space. So we, we are, we're getting a lot of um, vendors reaching out about virtual programming, like a virtual exercise class and a virtual um, STEM class. So we're going to try and push those as much as we can. Our own experience this summer wasn't great unless it was free, uh, but we're going to try and see uh, what we can do. We will try and run, um, I don't know if we'll try and run archery or, or stuff outdoors, but the window of outdoor programming is shorter because obviously if nobody else is running programming to September 14th, <laughs> starting until then, we're not going to start earlier than that. Mm -hmm. That is just bad optics. Um, but we are looking at our options. Okay. No, that's great. Thank you. Um, what, what about the drive-in movie? Are we going to do another drive-in movie? Yes. Sorry, did it just freeze? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> we so can do a drive-in movie, but we are concerned about finances and because we yeah. know that we have to run that at a loss, we have to, we're, we're taking a look to see if we can get any sponsors. We haven't reached out to them. Uh, sponsorships aren't too easy right now because everybody's sort of struggling. Uh, but that's where we're at with that program. It's like a question. So okay. Cindy, uh, Stacy and Cindy along those lines, uh, neighbor had a really good idea. As we have some sports teams in the playoffs, I don't know the legalities of this, but what if we were to do a drive-in Bruins game or a drive-in Celtics game? A lot of families did this when the Red Sox were in the World Series. In the past, they would have, you know, outdoor television watching parties of these games. And what if we did something along those lines? You may not have to pay the legal fees for the movie. I don't know if we can get the broadcast rights, but you could do the, something very similar. People could come watch the Bruins game during a playoff game or something along those lines or, or the Celtics, particularly if either one makes the finals. Um, I know right. that a lot of folks have done that in the neighborhoods. So maybe that's it's an a, alternative. It's a good question. If we use the vendor that we used last time, which means we had them broadcast over FM radio so that people aren't in a gathering listening to a speaker, they're all near their cars. Um, we don't actually pay for movie rights. So the fee that we were charged were ju was just for the vendor. Um, if, the if the game is being already broadcast over either internet or over the radio, as some of our games may be, I don't know. It's w something worth pursuing, right? Because then, like I know sports games are oftentimes on sports radio, right? Uh, I don't right. know if they are. So it's just a thought. It was just another thought yeah. to throw in. If it's easier on the movie thing, and it would bring in some, you know, all ages, you know, everything like that. We just can't let Mr. Crystal bring his beer, you know. 
Uh, Mr. Gersel has, a, I think, an out, a very nice outside TV that we, we could watch what's at his house. But I don't think we can drive. Tickets. We have to sit there. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, thanks. That's, that's an interesting idea. I don't know how possible that is to broadcast that without having to pay somebody for that. But um, we, uh, there are a couple of patrons at the first drive-in that actually asked about that. So while I haven't really looked into it, it, it is something that has been floating around. Great. Thank you. Uh, uh, next item, meeting minutes. We didn't have any meeting minutes, did we, to look at? Yeah. Slacker. Cindy, stay, Michelle's trying to get her. Uh... Oh, I'm, Michelle. <laughs> I just just a question about the use of our space and yep. the health department's lack of interest in us using the shared space is a bit troubling to me because if we're trying, if we were making the case that we want to reserve space outdoors, I understand outdoor is ideal. However, if we have a large enough space and we can work within the requirements to use an inside space, I think we should for just that reason, like the STEM programs and the robotics programs and all of those programs that are looking for space and schedules. And I don't think it should be acceptable for us just to say, okay, we're not, <laughs> we're not gonna push for the use of the shared space within that building. So I'm definitely gonna reach out to Tim and Tiffany and find out exactly what's going, like what their feeling is. The concern for me is it's a town municipal building. Every town building is still at 25%, including we got a waiver because of our summer programming. Um, so for instance, like the HR director and the HR assistant director aren't in the building at the same time ever. Um, Every building is still appointment only. Um, so I don't know if that's gonna change moving forward. Um, and we don't have any access to the schools. So it's still about the building. It's the interior space that's the problem. It's not the exterior spaces. Right, but if the, we can determine, so what is, if it's 25% occupancy, what does that actually mean? Having smaller groups, we've had small programs that happen, we can still use the space. I think finding creative ways of allowing for scheduling is so important. It's just having some opportunity for kids to get together and it's such a great space and we don't have very many of them. It, it, I don't disagree with you, I'm, you know, on the programming side, I want to program it, I want to figure it out. On the personal side, having 10 or 15 kids in that building means that they could potentially infect the staff in that building. So then do the staff have to not be there during that time? Um, so I don't know what the health department's gonna say. I mean, I can see it both ways. I, I just don't, because it's, you know, I agree because like they're opening schools and kids are going to be in schools for six hours, but the teachers are, we'll call it signing up for that. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do with the open spaces. Um, right now, I know that some of our uh, staff in town hall are, have, their offices are now in powers hall because they've had to move things around. I don't know if we start to grow our on-site people if our spaces are going to be used for offices. I don't know. Um, we've, you know, emergency management person was hired. This, his first day was today. He's supposed to be in the fire department. We don't know where he's going to end up for the first however many weeks. So I, I think along with the fields and the schools, there's a lot of unknowns happening. Um, but I do, like I said, plan to have a conversation with Tim this week and find out what's going on. I just didn't want to bombard him too much the first day. Uh, I, I, so Michelle, I said this at the chair's meeting the other day that it is killing me that how many years did we fight to get space for park and recreation because we got basically pushed out of the schools because they needed all their space, right? We got pushed out of the library because they needed the community room. And all of our space got taken away. We finally built the building with this beautiful big room that belongs to us and we mm -hmm. can't use it. 
how frustrating is it? I, I can't even see. I'm glad that I can't go in that building because it would kill me to see that room. And know but that I think it goes back to like, but we're in a pandemic. Like there's still concerns about people dying. The numbers are going up. We've had our first case of somebody getting it a second time. And that's what the health department sees all the time. Right. And so, I, that's what they see. But I see that room and I see how it many years I put into arguing that we needed a space of our own and believe me they tried to take it away and tell us we could share space at the Memorial Park Fieldhouse and we said no and we fought that and now we got nothing I know it's just frustrating I also see the pandemic I'm also wearing a mask and barely going anywhere but it is frustrating I, I share what Michelle said I share her feelings so all right all right that's it um, so I apologize Kristen about the meeting minutes because we do have minutes from May 26, 2020, and they were very well written, very well written, I believe. Um, so I would um, entertain a motion to approve those minutes. If anyone could make that. A second. Okay, so I'm sorry, Mr. Gerstle, you made a motion. I was going to make a motion to approve the minutes of the 26th. Thank you. And I don't make motions. I only second them. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard for you to second if I haven't made the motion. <laughs> even if she jumped the gun. <laughs> even when seconding it first, Michelle. Exactly. Renee, I read you. you. Uh, I believe that. Um, see, Matt was not at the meeting, and I don't think that Bruce was yet on the commission. So. Um, I will uh, ask, are there any comments or questions on those minutes before we come to a vote? Hearing none, I will um, call for the vote. So, uh, Commissioner Gerstel? Aye. Commissioner Geddes? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Tulin, I'm assuming you will? Abstain. Abstain, and Commissioner Williams, I assume the same thing. Um, I'll abstain. Okay, and the chair is an aye, so therefore it passes. Thank you very much, Kristen, for those minutes. Um, issues not reasonably anticipated by the chair. I don't um, have anything. I have one question about Mills Field. Is the irrigation fixed? It is. Okay, thank you. Um, Stacy, you have, have uh, a comment? I have um, two things that you did not reasonably anticipate. Okay. One of them is the pricing for Girls on the Run. Uh, we need, it, it will be the same, everything will be the same as the last time and that is for 235 for the program. 235, okay. Um, and what, and how long does that program run? <laughs> is that the fall? The eight weeks, it's eight weeks, right? Six, ten, ten weeks. You're muted, but I can read. Ten weeks, starting on September twentieth, which is a Sunday, so not really that day, but the week of September twentieth. Okay. Okay. So is it ten weeks, Kristen, or ten classes? I believe it's actually eight, and then the. Um, at this time in the spring, I think it's typically 10, maybe even 12 uh, anticipated. And then the, the 5K, which is a virtual 5K, is the 14th of November. Okay. That one, the program. Okay. Any uh, questions or comments from the commissioners? Nope. Can we, we, do we have to vote on it or no? I believe we yes. do. No, because it wasn't in the agenda as a voting item, so I don't know. What that means. It wasn't reasonably anticipated that it would come up quite this soon. Cindy. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. I didn't anticipate, but that's why this wow. is. Wow. Uh, so, um, so previous years we would not have been allowed to vote on something like this, but um, I find it refreshing that we can actually bring something up. Um, it comes up somewhat last minute and vote on it. So I don't know how the other commissioners feel. If you are not comfortable with that, feel free to speak out. No peer pressure. Okay. Um, and I would entertain a motion to um, approve that fee of $235 for the Girls on the Run program. 
So moved. All right, Mr. Tuland, and and was that seconded by Commissioner Geddes? Second. <laughs> okay. Um, are there any comments or questions about that program? Okay. Um, hearing none, we will come to the roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Garstel. Aye. Commissioner Geddes. Aye. Commissioner Tulin. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye. The chair is also an aye, so it passes unanimously. And what was the other um, issue that I didn't anticipate? No, you, I think, forget this often. So I think I'm going to add it to the agenda. So it's just on there. But what I what I wanted to re remind you that you forgot was uh, upcoming meeting dates. So we have our next meeting is scheduled for September 14th. The one after that is scheduled for September 28th, which is Yom Kippur. So we did discuss either bumping it a week or moving it to Tuesday. That being said, before you answer, October's first meeting is on a state holiday and we will also have to bump either a week or reschedule it for that following week. So I don't know. We can certainly meet on the 14th, but do you want me to do a doodle poll about the second meeting in September and the first meeting in October? Or do you think we can just bang it out right now? Um, okay, so so clearly we can't meet on the 28th if that's Yom Kippur, right? Correct. That's not, that's not nice. Oh, sure. Uh, there you go. Um, so, um, commissioners, we could meet on the week before the 21st, or we could meet on Tuesday the 29th. Anyone have preference? I'm good with either. I am but, as well. Yeah, I'm good with either. I just don't know if a back-to-back -back makes sense, like one week to the next, I think getting a week of school being open and field usage under our belt before we meet on the 29th would probably be. All right, then why? Two, we have two weeks. Okay, why don't we shoot for um, Tuesday the 29th then, Stacy? Okay. okay. Um, and then the next meeting would actually fall the following week. Is that right? No, no, because we typically oh. meet on the second and the fourth second, Monday. Sorry, and the second Monday is the state holiday. Right. Sorry, my exchange club meets the first and third weeks of the month, and then Parker Wright meets the second and fourth, and I often confuse which week is which. Um, so instead of the twelfth, we would have to meet the thirteenth. I don't we know. Meet on the thirteenth, if that's okay with everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is that. Yeah. Okay. You're getting a lot of yeses on that, so. Okay. And then the 26th looks fine. I, I didn't look, I mean, I looked past it. There's no other, uh, there's no other concerns right. except for like 1228, which when I think When is we town do. meeting? On a Sunday, October it is 5th. Yeah, October uh, 4th, I believe. Fourth. October 4th at once. So close. Um, so. Okay, um, you know what, Stacey, it would help if you put the meeting dates, for, we used to have them on the meeting agenda down the side when we used to decide them. Um, I think I think maybe it was the former chair that got away from that, but I don't know. I, mean, I, mean, maybe <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think that's why you're forgetting it's not your fault. So we're gonna put it back on the agenda. Well, he was the one who kept making them change all the time, I believe. We yeah. never knew which, what, we didn't have the second and fourth. Listen, I don't even know what I meant for CPC. Forget about anything else. Come on now. <laughs> and I am not working right. next week's or next the next meeting on the fourteenth. You're not going to be here. Okay. Are you trying? No, I, not to be personal. Are you going to vacation like to London or something? Yeah, no, not not to London. We're going to go to the Cape, but we will not be oh. able to. Okay. Well, that's yeah, close that's, to that's London. That's close. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're going over the water. Don't, the water. don't forget yeah. your passport. I know. That feels like a huge excursion just to get out of the house. That's like... Did you go over, over that big bridge. You exactly. Know? It's a big deal. It's a big deal. I think it's further than I've been in the last six months. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Great. All right. Well, thank you.
Thank you, everyone. I appreciate uh, I appreciate your time and I appreciate your uh, willingness to spend uh, a meeting going this late. So, um, one I mean, quick thing: Can I ask you about the skateboard park? Did we find a spot for it? Because I don't want to and more time to go by. We haven't found a spot for it. I have been talking with Eddie. Uh, we did locate said skate park, so that was my first win. Um, and now I, I believe there's some, you know, issues, some quick fixes we need to take with it or some broken parts. So that is the next step. Trying to pull Eddie away from that is crazy. So I'm going to take, um, maybe I'll drag Chris down. He will love that. Not you. Burn him. Um, he'll love to help me fix that. So I'm going to go take a look at it and see what it really needs to be done and then find a place for it. Great. Okay. All right. Thank you. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, everyone. Oh, I wait. Do I have to poll everyone? All right. Let's vote on it. Commissioner Gersel. Aye. Commissioner Geddes. Aye. Commissioner Tulin. Aye. Commissioner Williams. Aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that took care of me too, isn't I? So uh, I declare the meeting adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Not all. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.